sorry. <laughs> and no, no, none of these messages have come through until just now. Um, hello, welcome to At Home with Hayley. I am, of course, Hayley Andrews. Um, I apologise for the delay in starting this morning and for talking for the last five minutes with my uh, microphone muted. <laughs> what are you going to do? Eh? <laughs> uh, even I make mistakes sometimes. Um, so welcome to episode 68. Um, the reason we are starting late this morning is because we have had technical issues with our guest. Our guest this week is Mr. Nick Burns. He is going to be talking to you about the state of the UK economy right now, um, both from um, a um, uh, a current currency point of view, so foreign exchange, which is the industry that it's in, but also um, the current economic state of the UK as well, and what's kind of uh, driving that at this moment in time. Now, as our guest is actually um, the market update today, um, while we're waiting for him to join, uh, what I will do is I'll go through the updates with you if he still struggles in joining and is not able to attend today, um, we will record the session offline and put it onto our YouTube channel. And I can only apologize for the inconvenience. However, I wanted to go live because I can see you all waiting um, for that to happen. So um, I'll crack on uh, with some housekeeping. I can see that you can hear me loud and clear. Um, happy 1st of December. Um, so uh, we are well and truly in the uh, Christmas uh, festive period now. Um, I had my advent calendar this morning. I have my Christmas jumper on and my Christmas tree is now up. Um, so we're definitely getting into the festive um, uh, period. Um, as I was saying on mute <laughs> quite successfully, um, uh, I've actually been at Christmas party after Christmas party and by the 1st of December, I'm already all parted out with a good number still left to attend. Um, I think I'm getting way too old for all of this partying. Uh, let me know in the chat box um, if you're all parted out already. <laughs> um, so we're going to... Um, we have Christmas jumper day as well, as per James instructing us to wear our Christmas jumpers today because it is the 1st of December. Um, it is the countdown, the official countdown to Christmas. And as you all know, I'm Christmas crazy and it's my favourite time of the year. So definitely a smile on my face and definitely happy uh, to see December. So, um, while we're still waiting for uh, Nick to join, um, I'm not having any messages from him so I'm assuming that he's just rebooting his computer if you've got any general questions pop them in the chat box and um, also let me know where you're dialing in from because we are across um, I say 18 but we're actually across more than that now um, uh, different countries throughout the world um, so let us know where you're dialing in from how you're doing um, and uh, what's happening within your UK property journey right now? What are you seeing in the market? And we can pick those um, uh, thoughts and suggestions up and, and have a conversation about it. So um, I'm skipping through the slides because, of course, we're waiting for Nick to attend. Um, and uh, so I'm just going to talk to you about a few things that we've got going on. Um, so we have the Property Success Convention. I can see that some of you on the call um, have actually already attended or already in, in our training program um, and um, successfully investing here in the UK um, or just getting started uh, on your UK property journey. Um, but for those of you that have not attended, um, the Property Success Convention is a jam-packed um, a filled day of property content, all things research, numbers, structure, lending, um, uh, criteria around that, strategies across everything from buy to lets, HMOs, lease options, rent to rent, for those that are looking for more creative strategies, commercial, commercial conversions, and uh, also um, uh, we touch slightly on developments as well. Bear with me, I'm just getting a message uh, from Nick. It is now working and you will be joining any second now. Um, but for those of you that haven't attended, this is by far the best 
um, one day um, uh, uh, basic training um, for you to actually move forward, get a real good insight into uh, the UK property market, all of the different strategies, the criteria, lending and teams you need around that. And even for those that have done training with other training organisations, this is still um, our basic is very much uh, uh, quite often uh, their paid version of delivery. Um, so it's definitely worth you checking it out. It's a one day uh, event. It is free. You can join by scanning the QR code on screen now um, to secure your spot. And we are uh, doing the next one, I believe, the end of December. Um, so, yes, uh, get get joining if you haven't already. Now, as we do have Nick now, Nick, are you there? I'm going to skip back through my slides. <laughs> uh, I, I, I had to stall for quite some time there. Uh, Nick. Uh, apologies. Um, don't, know, don't know what was going on there. We had a technical okay. glitch, don't, didn't we? Don't worry. We got there in the end. Um, uh, ju just uh, just so you know how much uh, of a mess up I actually did this morning. I was talking for five minutes without my mic, <laughs> with my mic muted. Um, so oh, the audience has probably had a bit of a laugh at me this morning. But hey, I I'm, I'm laughing with them. <laughs> We've all done it. We've all done it. Your camera at the moment isn't actually coming through, so it's just um, loading. But what I'm going to do right. is I'm going to ask. I've already given an introduction. Um, so if you'd like to just give a short introduction and um, share your screen, I'm going to stop sharing my slides now. You can share your screen. Ah, I can see you now. Hello. And Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's all drama on the 1st of December, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. New, new month. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, well, I'm, I'm Nick, uh, for those of you that don't know. Um, and... Um, I run Lighthouse FX, and uh, you should be able to see a rather nice picture. Um, can you see my screen, Hayley? How about that? Perfect. That's fantastic. Yay! Yay! We got there in the end. <laughs> really sorry. Really sorry. Uh, okay. Right, so we're finally there. So, so yeah. So, look. Um, so, I, I realise that not everybody that attends these seminars are sort of international and have international requirements. So, um, although that kind of is where where I come from, as as anybody who's seen me speak before on on Haley's channel will know that we you know we follow the economy and the British economy, and as part of our job is to work out what the pound's going to do in the future. So, what I'm hoping to do is touch on uh, what's going on in the British economy at the moment, how how things are looking. Um, and I'm going to touch on the implications for the pound and what's been going on. Um, so hopefully both domestic and international investors will get some value out of this. Um, hopefully. Um, so, uh, oh, first of all, who, who are we? So, um, so again, uh, international investors, um, you may not be aware, because a lot of them aren't, that currency fluctuation has a direct Im impact on what you're about to do. Uh, and we can help you control uh, the, the variable that is foreign exchange and minimize transaction costs. So typically saving around about a percent of the value, um, specializing high, high value cross border payments, um, core offering, bank beating exchange rates, um, me as well to guide through the process and, and support um, and to hopefully execute trades at the more favorable times in the markets. The peaks and troughs is what we look to do and offer some more technical uh, products. But uh, so the UK economy. So what's been going on? It's been a blooming weird few years. Um, and um, but it, it seems like everyone's sort of uh, coming out of the last, um, you know, sort of recession fears are easing. Inflation globally seems to be uh, taming. Um, but as far as the UK goes, so we literally, by the skin of our teeth, narrowly avoided uh, a technical recession this year. Um, it had been actually expected that we were to go into recession. But um, but yeah, literally, and when I say narrowly, I mean 0% growth. Uh, I'll, I'll come on to that in a second. So no change on previous years, which means, again, you avoid a recession, but it's not exactly a very rosy uh, picture. Uh, the Bank of England interest rates have hit 5.25%, the highest level since 2008, as uh, Bank of England attempts to tame rampant inflation. So 
again, inflation has been a global thing. Everyone's facing inflation after the pandemic and the amount of money that's been printed and um, supply chain issues, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and pretty much, well, most central banks, the Fed, ECB, Bank of England, they have a 2% target on inflation. So, And what they'll do is they'll raise interest rates to try and encourage saving as opposed to spending, which then brings, in theory at least, inflation down. Um, and so inflation, we've seen fallen from double digits over 11% at points to 4.6% uh, in October. Uh, but again, that's... Uh, I mean, in usual circumstances, 4.6% above, you know, uh, the 2% target, you know, more than twice the target would still be considered exceptionally high. Um, but in this case, obviously, we've been talking about double digit inflation for the last year or so. Um, so <clears throat> things are heading in the right direction, that's for sure. Um, but there's arguably still quite a long way to go before inflation sort of uh, returns to what would be normal. Um, and this is kind of combined. This, the, the, the UK's economic outlook is quite, um, it's more gloomy than a lot of others because we've got this sticky inflation. So it's remaining quite high, um, but the economy is not doing exceptionally well. So again, 0% growth uh, the last reading, three months to September. So again, continuing to flatline. Um, the labour market remains tight. So that's one positive that we've got going for us. Um, but again, that is um, similar to much of the rest of the world. And the, the labour market is tight because one could argue that with the price of everything going up, you know, the grocery shop, your fuel bills, et cetera, et cetera, going up, people need to be in work. And so um, there's a, a real lull in vacancies, job openings um, and uh, and. And, and, and yeah, the, the, the labour market, 4.3% unemployment May to July. Um, it, it went as low as uh, into the low 3% uh, back end of last year. So that is starting to rise. And we would expect that to be a um, result of, of rising interest rates as well, because um, companies have got less money to go and employ. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, wage growth. Uh, so this is the other interesting thing. And, and what we've had in the UK is what we've what we've labelled uh, a cost of living crisis. So over the last couple of years, inflation has way outpaced the wage growth. Uh, so in other words, the cost of living is going, the, the cost of all everybody's goods is going up, but people haven't been getting paid more. So that gap in uh, and that's what's led to this cost of living crisis, whereby everyone's quite a lot shorter um, come the end of the month, let's say. Um, but wage growth is beginning to rise. Um, and this is a bit of a double edged sword. So, th so the last reading was 7.7% annualised wage growth. In other words, wages went up 7.7% compared with the same period of, of uh, 2023, which is potentially seen as a, a very good thing. However, it's also inflationary. So when people are paid more, they have more money in their pocket. They're more likely to go out and buy more stuff, uh, which in, in turn increases the value, uh, the, the, the price of everything. So one could argue that that's actually a really bad thing and, and should be expected to further embed inflation into the economy into the next uh, next year or so. Um, a, lot of, a lot's been made about public sector wage uh, hikes. Um, so a, a number of different industries have, have had really quite significant pay, uh, pay increases over the last little while uh, provided by the government. Um, and so that's why a uh, part of the reason why this figure is starting to sort of really, really rise. Um, so uh, I'm sure Hayley probably did a, a bit of a special on it, but we had the, the autumn budget fairly recently. Um, and so the latest projections for uh, next year, 2024, is that the UK economy will grow by 0.7% and inflation will lower to 2.8%. Now, so in other words, the outlook isn't that great. You know, we would want uh, growth around 2% and inflation around 2%. Uh, and significantly, perhaps most significantly, these figures were revised from an original figure in April, I believe it was April, the, the forecast from April, uh, revised from 2.8% growth next year and inflation was expected to uh, to, to fall to 0.9%. So it, 
So again, so these these revisions, these revised projections are really quite negative for the UK economy. Um, and what they probably mean uh, and what markets have interpreted these to mean is that Bank of England policy will remain tight. Uh, in other words, interest rates will remain high for quite a long time as um, as they try to tame inflation. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so the currency market and the pound. So what is it meant for the pound? So at the moment, as has been the theme for the last uh, few years, really. Well, I mean, typically it's generally the always the theme, but more so over the last couple of years. The main driver of current of currency markets has been central bank policy. What, where are interest rates? Where are they likely to go in the future? Um, and uh, higher interest rates would typically um, strengthen the domestic currency because it's more appealing for investors to hold balances in that in that currency because they get higher yield. So higher interest rates, better appeal of the currency, um, and so the, the currency strengthens. Um, now, policy forms, there's a few things that, are uh, factors into when traders and whatnot price in where they think interest rates are going to go. Uh, so inflation, which we've touched upon, the labour market uh, and economic growth readings. So these these three things are the kind of the main things that markets are looking at as to whether interest rates are going to go higher, which actually we think pretty much everyone's interest rates or the main central banks have peaked uh, their interest rates. Uh, most significantly at the moment is when are these guys going to cut rates uh, and everybody broadly is expected to cut next year. Um, so um, so the Fed, ECB, Bank of England, all seen as cutting interest rates next year. Um, the Federal Reserve are seen as cutting sooner. Their inflation has fallen far quicker than in the UK and Europe. And... Um, and, and their economy is really remaining really robust. Most, barring the last couple of weeks, pretty much all the economic data from the US has been really positive. And this is, has a knock on effect um, across the whole currency market, really, because the Fed have been really aggressive in raising interest rates. So, um, and that's again, bolstered the, the value of the dollar. And of course, what we also have uh, to factor in as well is what we call haven appeal and, and risk sentiment. So, uh, again, there's been quite a lot going on in the world over the last uh, few few months and, and this year. So, of course, we've had Ukraine, Russia. Um, and in times of uncertainty, we typically see uh, investors looking for safe havens for their money. So they might want to tie up their funds in U the US dollar because it's deemed that it's going to be less um, reactive on the back of negative uh, to, the, to the opposite. In fact, it's going to be boosted on the back of negative global uh, indicators. And so, of course, as well, we have, we've got the situation Hamas and Israel. Um, so we saw the dollar really bolstered there. Um, but again, so what we're seeing over the last week is an unwinding of this haven appeal. So we got a truce uh, or a, a, stale, a, a truce in Israel, which was um, a, a good thing. It enabled people to sell out of the dollar and buy riskier currencies. Um, and also we're seeing Inflation falling dramatically in the US and bets increasing that the Fed are going to be the first to cut rates next year as early as March um, is, is, is what's expected. And by comparison, the Bank of England are not expected to cut rates until the back end of next year. Uh, they're expected to be the last to cut interest rates. So that's why we've seen the pound over the last week or two. Uh, really rising. And we've seen uh, the pounds gained around about 5% in the last couple of weeks against the dollar uh, as a result of this. So um, it's arguable that we've possibly hit the bottom of the run for the pound and uh, it will see better fortunes in the months to come. Um, <clears throat> oh, so I've pretty much covered a lot of this really. But um, so we've, we've seen this unwinding haven appeal. So over the last couple of years, we've seen this you know, really negative data, really high inflation, wars and all this other stuff that's really sort of um, encouraged investors into havens, into the dollar, into the Swiss franc. Um, but now over the last couple of weeks, we're seeing the pound gain against um, against these, uh, the, these haven currencies. Uh, as investors take on more risk. It's widely expected that the UK is going to have a really quite crap, uh, sorry, excuse my language, quite rubbish um, growth outlook over the next year or two. Uh, that is 
largely priced in for the pound. So that's why it's been quite so so low in value. As the outlook changes, and um, my last point here is, is perhaps relevant. So the biggest moves in the currency market come on the back of a difference between expectation and results. At the moment, the expectation is that the UK economy is going to be struggling over the next couple of years. So if we get data that suggests that there is a considerable upside, that the reality is going to be better than what we expect, we would really see uh, the pound gain in traction and we'd expect it to really rally from, from current lows. Um, again, that's tied in with the, the, the increased prospect that Bank of England interest rates are going to remain high through next year and into 2025. Um, so these are a couple of charts of where we've been over the last little while. Uh, so this is sterling euro going back to 2000. <clears throat> uh, and you can see, uh, hopefully you can see my cursor, but 2008, obviously financial crash. Oops, sorry. Uh, financial crash. Um, and then uh, the Brexit vote here, 2016. And, and so we're really sort of hanging around these, these lows still. And um, the currency pairs have been really quite suppressed over the last little while. This is sterling dollar. Again, you know, this is uh, increasing haven appeal that we've seen here. And um, we're, we're starting to see, as, as I say, we've seen a 5% rise in this pairing over the last couple of weeks. So um, one would, it would be quite easy to argue that we've seen um, the sort of bottom. And this here was a uh, good old Liz Truss's announcement. Um, but um, but yeah, one, one would argue that we're, we're seeing perhaps the bottom of the pound uh, at, at the moment. So for international investors, I do encourage you to have a look at perhaps getting the pound bought because um, on the grand scheme of things, seems like a good good time. Um, so how can we add value? Um, so again, bank BC exchange rates, percent of the value of uh, uh, saving compared with the banks. Um, you get me as well to help guide you through the process and, and execute trades at the most favorable time. Uh, we get daily market commentary, 24 hour online platform and settlements within about half an hour. Um, and I'd like to cover this as well now. Um, so this is the process of doing a trade with us. Um, I always, I, I like to cover this because people always ask this. Um, so the flow of funds is literally from your Euro account, this is a Euro sell deal by pounds, from your Euro account to my Euro account, we do the exchange, pay pounds onto your bank, your business bank account or your UK uh, pound account to buy the property. Um, and that's how it kind of works. But of course you get the additional savings. Um, and that's about it. Short and sweet today, Hayley. I don't know whether anybody has any questions. Um, I've been answering some questions in the chat box. Um, so oh, have you? I haven't had any questions specifically to you. <laughs> um, there okay. was a few questions okay. around. Um, uh, the questions are private. So for those of you that are, are think it's actually only comes to me. Um, I think you might be able to see them though, uh, Nick. Um, so there was questions around obviously um, councils going bust. So Nottingham City Council has just uh, obviously uh, announced that they're uh, in trouble as well. Birmingham went under. There's, there's quite a few actually. Mm. Um, so the question was really, would it have an impact on um, property prices? Um, so um, there's no one answer and, and, and the answer for Birmingham may not be the same answer for Nottingham and vice versa and, and all of the others that are kind of in trouble at the moment. Um, we could probably get a, a whole list of uh, councils that are struggling. It's pretty much majority of the UK. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, in my opinion, really what it will affect is obviously the development um, uh, element of the towns and cities and um, because funding will be pulled and won't be available. So projects that are already struggling will will obviously um, quite likely not be completed unless a private investor steps in and uh, and takes over the project. So. That's normally what happens. Um, I'm not sure whether you've got an opinion on this, Nick, um, but um, what, what we'll quite often see is um, if, uh, you know, the confidence of uh, the people go down within the area um, and investment from a private perspective um, retracts, 
uh, then yes, it can have a knock on effect for house prices, because of course, um, it, the, 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 well, because if the confidence isn't there and uh, private investment isn't coming to the area, the area is not being developed. And if government infrastructure pots have been reduced yeah. and funding has been pulled, then that side of development isn't going on. So as professionals, what we do do is we look for government infrastructure plans. We look for private investment. We look for the amount of money that's been spent in an area. If that amount of money reduces, um, then, of course, uh, is the area a sustainable area? But I think ultimately it's always going to come down to um, that particular town, city, um, economic state, you know, what's going on within the businesses that are local and not just the council. Um, I mean, the way the council spend money is ridiculous. Um, and uh, it's quite often three, four times higher than any private developer um, uh, would be able to deliver the same projects. And so it does not surprise me that they're struggling um, uh, and um, they pretty much always struggle. <laughs> but of course, they're all announcing themselves um, as uh, going bust at, at the moment. And that seems to be the, the new hit thing for councils. They're all kind of cutting back. Um, and putting uh, funding on hold, um, of course, and they're not able to move forward with their bright and wonderful plans for development of their own towns and cities. Um, and we're seeing that across the board. Go for it. Quick question, Hayley, for, for you. I mean, HS2, what are your thoughts on yeah. that? Is that going to affect things? Um, so... I mean, HS2 is already massively over budget. They've already obviously reduced um, uh, the the track. So it's not now going up into um, Bradford, uh, uh, you know, and there's so many. That part, phase two of that is not happening now. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think while it will in the future, uh, I, it perhaps not be ours. <laughs> I mean, the figures were just... B ballistic, yeah. weren't they? I mean, yeah. you know. I think, I, I think the overall view of obviously HS2 was connecting north and south um, mm -hmm. and um, closing that gap, uh, closing down the divide um, uh, between north and south. And really, all it's done is um, and will do. Um, because I don't think that we're, we're going to see for some time uh, the benefit of the money that's been spent is really connecting areas of the UK that were already very well connected with the South. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So it was a great idea, um, but maybe if they'd have started North and come South, it would have got finished. Um, but because they haven't done that, um, it, it, you know, it, funding's running out. You've got lots of councils that are going bust, government uh, reducing, obviously um, funds available for these types of projects. But they're, they're standing instead and saying that they will make it happen. And uh, even if Conservative um, kind of lose and get kicked out, which is likely, um, and whether that's a good thing or not, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> um, I, I think Labour are still behind uh, HS2, aren't they? So, um, I'm not sure, to I be think, honest. Yeah, I think, I think it's been a hell of a lot of money that's been spent uh, that could have been better spent elsewhere. Um, and still had immediate effect, you know, um, as I Does said, it, we all have. The, the, if it, I mean, if it's, uh, uh, does the sort of shelving of the extension, does that impact the property market? Does that make it less appealing to investors, perhaps, to be in parts of, you know, like you mentioned, Bradford? I mean, is it, does it, is it going to well, have an impact really. on things or not? I don't I don't think it's going to have a huge impact. Um, so once the project is de is delivered, um, the reason it pushes up prices in the area is not because investors are investing in the area. It's because businesses recognize the opportunity, the connectivity and then move to the area to push up anyway. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's going to have a negative impact. But of course, that positive outlook that everyone was hoping mm -hmm. for is not going to be delivered. Um, mm -hmm. So you've got, you know, you've had already last year and the year before a lot of London businesses moving their head offices to Birmingham mm -hmm. um, with whether that was in anticipation of HS2. I'm not sure. It's already very well connected, isn't it? Well, um, that's what so I was going to say. 
that's that was my always my argument. I mean, are, are people going to say, "Cool, I'm not going to buy me because it takes three hours on the train," but I will go because it's only two two hours now. I mean, I, I don't know whether that. I mean, does that well, no. make a big difference or not? I mean, I, I don't think so. But for I the don't cost think it's that billion or whatever. You know, yeah. sort of. <laughs> I mean, the immediate kind of Birmingham to London, which you know that that is going to be finished and 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 it will mm. it will be in place. Um, uh, I mean, whether it was best used there or you know further mm. it, it, it is that that's the question isn't it you know that's mm. the argument it's they started at the wrong end um because mm. birmingham to london was already well connected but if yeah. you can get to you know birmingham within less than an hour then that makes birmingham a commute um but then you'd argue well would you live in london if you were working in Birmingham and vice versa the other way around. Yeah. But what you would have seen is, of course, if you're living in London, you're paying London prices, you're getting mm-hmm. a higher wage, etc. cetera, um, mm-hmm. and um, you're living and working there. If you were to move to Birmingham and then take, obviously, mm-hmm. an hour train or less than an hour train into London, um, mm-hmm. then that would push up house prices in Birmingham because, of course, you can mm-hmm. buy cheaper price per square foot in Birmingham than you can in London, and it would make it commutable. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But anything over that hour was always really going to be, well, how much benefit is it really going to add? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a hard one, isn't it? I mean, it, it it's basically the most expensive hole that's ever been dug. <laughs> It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's so t- typical at the moment, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. Won't go there. Right. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess what? <laughs> right. Okay. So um I think you need to stay on for a moment, but I'm just gonna quickly um go through um a few of the slides uh, that I have left. If you've got any questions in the chat box, do let us know. Um what's your opinion on HS2? Has it impacted your decision on where you're buying? I know lots of people that were absolutely devastated about the um the line not coming into Bradford um and, and connecting that up. But actually, the money that they're spending or supposedly now spending, whether it goes ahead or not, I'm not entirely sure, is actually just speeding up the already connection and putting better services in place, which has a more immediate impact. So in in actual fact, the backup plan was probably a better solution and is deliverable in a much more realistic time frame and at a much lower budget and still has that benefit. So... Um, let us know in the chat box what what your thoughts are on on HS2 and has it impacted on where you've decided to buy and if you have decided to buy in a particular area and now it's been announced that they're not going into that area, has your opinion changed on that area as a result and would you still be investing there? Let us know. Right, okay, so our special guest is you. We've done that slide. (laughs) We're going through questions at this moment in time. Um, YFE events. Um, so I've already spoken to you about the Property Success Convention. That's our one day conference uh, where we talk all things property. If you would like to attend, scan the QR code on screen um, or visit our website and uh, book your slot. I believe it's the 30th, of, the 29th or the 30th of December is, is the next one. Uh, of course, you can watch Property Elevator Season 6 over on uh, Sky 186. Um, the whole of season, season 6 has, has actually already been aired. Um, but what we will be doing now, uh, keep an eye on our YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe. And that way, then you'll have notifications when new materials uploaded. We are going to release episode by episode on our YouTube channel so you can watch the replays. Um, And then, of course, if you are interested in doing any training with us, um, you'd like to know what we're all about um, uh, or you'd just like to discuss your current situation, um, we do do a free consultation call um, that will be with me or one of the YFE mentors. You can book that call by scanning the QR code on screen now or again, go into our website under the Education Hub uh, option menu and choose in free consultation call. But I think that's all we've got time for. So uh, should we do a Christmas song, Nick? How's your singing? No, 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 well, you're <laughs> that one on me. 
Uh, absolutely <laughs> not. They, they don't want to hear me sing, that's for sure. They definitely don't <laughs> want to hear me sing. But although when I'm having a shower, I have a full-blown concert uh, in, in play. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shower God. and everything. <laughs> oh, God. We no, don't need that. From, it's a bit early in the from, morning. It is a bit early. Look, you've gone red as well. Look, I'm only joking. That's really good. <laughs> that's my, that's my I love Christmas winding rouge. him up. <laughs> so me and Nick have worked together for a really, really long time. It's well over a decade, isn't it, Nick? Um, and Indeed. he's the only part of my power team that I don't actually use within my own business, as in my investment business, because majority of the stuff I'm doing is actually UK based. So therefore, I have no call for his expertise. However, we constantly talk about the UK economy and there's no better person uh, in my opinion to give an update and you are my favourite power team member. Oh, very kind Hayley, very kind. <laughs> very no. Well but, one day when you go for global domination Hayley and you're buying all your properties all over the world then you we'll, mean uh, when? we'll do some we, business. Oh eh? you mean in property? In, in yeah. education we're, we're across 18 different not- countries so. Uh, we're, we're pretty solid there but yes when i start expanding outside of the uk and, and buying houses abroad 100 percent, you will be the first person i come to <laughs> but we, that's all we've got time for today uh folks um thank you so much on behalf of me and nick nick thank you very much for your market update that was very insightful um and if you are looking for any um uh currency exchange um or you just want to have a chat with nick reach out to him he is the best person for the job uh super approachable and as i said always got a smile on his face and uh will always go out of his way to make sure you're a happy customer um but we're gonna give you a very festive goodbye and say have a wonderful christmas um and we'll see you in the new year goodbye for now thank you very much have a lovely time thank you, thank you Hayley. Bye. thanks as always bye